we think about designing gardens, before we get to the point where we can start selecting plant material, we want to think more broadly about plant types and their uses. And by type, I'm referring to the very general uh, life cycle and habit of the plant. Is it annual or perennial? Is it deciduous or evergreen? Also, plant form is going to be very important. And these different types of plant are each used very differently in the landscape. We'll start by looking at annuals, for example. Annuals provide instant, season-long color. They're most commonly planted in masses in a flower bed and just to provide a, a large amounts of color throughout the season. We also see them commonly used in containers or as a filler in a perennial garden. The term perennial applies to any plant that has a lifespan of greater than two years. So this would include trees and shrubs like crepe myrtle, as well as herbaceous perennials, which we more commonly associate with the word perennial. I'll treat the trees and shrubs, the woody perennials, separately and focus just on the herbaceous perennials. Now the term herbaceous refers to the fact that the plants don't create woody stems. Uh, instead, the stems remain more flexible and they also tend to die back uh, each season. Now this is certainly something that you want to consider in your designing. If you could imagine a bed that's planted entirely in perennials, it could look rather bleak in the winter time. Of course, there are certain plants and especially grasses that keep their form throughout the winter and there are perennials that are evergreen like our hellebores. There are also groups of plants that are perennial when they're planted in the right environment, but in Oklahoma they don't survive the winter and so we treat them as an annual. And this yellow bells tacoma is a really good example of that. Perennials are used in beds, borders, and islands. They're really adaptable to many situations. Sometimes we see them planted as a ground cover. Uh, the sedum here is a nice example of that. We use perennials as ground covers a lot in the shade where grasses don't grow as well. It's a really good use for them there. Perennials are incredibly diverse in their form, their colors, their textures, and their sizes. And this allows them to be used in many different interesting combinations. There's also a perennial well suited to just about any growing condition, uh, full sun to shade, wet soils to dry, fertile or infertile. Now, perennials tend to have a relatively short bloom period compared to annuals. But what this does is allow the perennial garden to change throughout the season. Woody ornamentals include trees and shrubs, and these are further broken down into two categories, evergreen and deciduous. Deciduous ornamentals lose their leaves each fall, and they change with the seasons. Now, they, they tend to have special traits, such as a grand floral display or a really brilliant fall color that evergreens lack. And this can allow them to be used as a seasonal accent or point of interest. A good example could be the brilliant blue fruits that the leatherleaf mahonia produces, or the beautiful white floral displays of many dogwoods. Evergreens are further broken down into two categories, the narrowleaf types and the broadleaf types. Narrowleaf evergreens are those that we most commonly associate with the word evergreen. They have the slender, needle-like leaves and include plants like yews and junipers. Uh, these, because they have, often have a nice compact and dense form, they're used widely for hedges or screens and also as foundation plantings. Now broadleaf evergreens have a comparatively broad leaf. Uh, but the name can be kind of misleading because um, nandinas and boxwoods with their small leaves are also called broadleaf. And broadleaf evergreens are again very useful in foundations as well as borders. Sometimes we have a nice uh, focal point too, such as a azalea that's a broadleaf evergreen. A nice large specimen like this uh, weeping yopon holly can make an excellent focal point in the landscape. The importance of trees in the landscape cannot be understated. In addition to the wonderful shade they provide, they also uh, reduce noise pollution, they can screen undesirable views, and they create a sense of enclosure and comfort. 
Trees can also be used to connect uh, buildings such as your home to the landscape and guide the eye downward to your gardens and perhaps a focal point. Trees themselves are a wonderful focal point and create natural beauty to the landscape. Vines are another type of plant that we can use and vines fall into just about every category. There's annuals and perennials, there's deciduous vines, there's evergreen vines. And vines vary considerably in how large they grow, how aggressive they are, uh, and also how they physically climb. And so you want to carefully consider your intended use of the vine when you're selecting a species. In addition to plant type, we also want to consider plant form. There are many common forms or shapes of plants. These include uh, things like rounded forms, pyramidal, uh, spreading, weeping like the yopon holly we just looked at. And as you can imagine, the form or shape of a plant is going to direct its use in the landscape. This juniper is a great example. Its spreading habit directs its use as a ground cover. Because there's so many different forms, we can find one to meet very specific landscape uses. For example, this upright uh, columnar boxwood is a wonderful specimen to use in some of those difficult places. Imagine a very narrow bed where you want to get height, but other upright plants would just spread too broadly. So as we can start to consider planting design, rather than thinking about specific plants, it's important instead to think about plant type and plant form to direct your designs. <music>